Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. A big hello to all the new subscribers. Thank you, thank you for subscribing. Um, got a few things going on right now that uh, I want to get done. In the last video we finished up the lower unit and whatever other problems was on the Little Johnson there. And in this video I've got, I'm, so I'm fixing to switch those out and bring the last 15. Uh, the same person owns both of these ones. I think I might have to pull the power head on the one coming up because it's got a broke shift handle I do believe. So I'll get these two swapped out and we'll get on that but I want to show you some other things. A few videos ago I was working on a little Yamaha. I got me some new decals for it. New decals. And you say which Yamaha? That Yamaha. The bonnet looks pretty bad. I ordered a latch for it. I did not have one for that style, um, which surprised me. I could have jury rigged something, but I found these little rubber tie-down latches uh, on the interscreen. And so I'm going to scrape that, what's left of the old decal off there, and get me some paint. First, I'll rub it up with some sand in my paper. And uh, get that thing looking a little better. And because I got silver salmon season coming up. And I plan on doing a little trolling with that there motor. Well, if silver salmon's coming up, you got to do this. I show you. You got to do that. You got to cure up that row. So I'm um, those pink salmon I caught. Three of those were female and had row in them. So that's the row being cured. And uh, it hardens up. It gets all sticky. And then you can cut it into the right size chunks and float it off the bottom or off a bobber and get them nice big silver salmon. And I like to put up oh, about three or four of those uh, in full pint jars for making salmon patties and tuna helper type dishes and so forth. So I got got that going on. I got a there's my donor motor for, that I took the lower unit off of. But uh, I got to get that carburetor and a bunch of other stuff off of there. Still a lot of good stuff on that thing. So, so let me get these switched out. That Johnson, and I'll bring in the next one. I'll be right back. Boom, 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 boom. Sand it off. Like 
tanks. I don't want this stuff blowing all around. You understand? Got a little bit of glue on there. Doesn't need to get off. Ain't that a cutie? I put transom clamp handles, and decals, and I took my little paint pen and put a red stripe all the way around. Now she's a real cutie. So now we can take it and go trolling. Trolling, trolling, trolling. But yeah, she turned out pretty nice. Nice little cutie. Had a couple of subs ask me about my spark checkers, those spark spiders, I call them. I got one that's a, uh, that I just oh. used in this video is a Mercatronics uh, spark spider, and the other one's an, an Evan Rude. And then I got a whole plethora of other kinds. But before I bought out that outboard 
small engine shop um, from the fellow that got attacked by the bear, I'll show you what I used. And I still have it. And it's fine. This will do up to a six cylinder outboard. And all it is is a wire with a clip. So you can clip it onto the block. It comes down and it, the other side of the clip I wired to a screw that goes through the distributor cap and then I covered everything with a uh, First I used JB Quick Weld and then I put uh, liquid tape on it so so I didn't get no arcing around that. And then all that's inside is a big washer and the spark will jump from here to the electrode from where the spark plug wire goes. So here's my homemade distributor cap multi-cylinder spark checker that I made years ago. Um, just a big washer, a couple of washers, a bolt goes through all that, a nut, then your wire, another nut, wrap everything electrical tape or whatever, and maybe a little liquid tape. And I like to hook them up on a two-cylinder opposite of each other, 180 apart. So you should see one spark. And the spark will jump from the washer to the electrode, from the washer to the electrode. If I can get it to where you can see it. Where you at in there? You should be able to. You should be able to see that. I think. I don't know. That one. Yeah, maybe. No, you're not gonna see that top one there. That way you will. Hopefully you're seeing that. You got good schwacky on both. But that's it. It's just made out of an old distributor cap. hot spocky on both cylinders this is engine number three and uh, what I'm going to do is just see if the thing will run before I pull the power head I am gonna to have to pull the power head to get at that gear shift which is broke off okay this is the bottom cylinder we are zeroed out Let's see what so we get We got 125. So we got 125 on the bottom. This little 15 ain't as clean as that last one, but, but it's not too bad either. We are zeroed out. That one felt a little different, like it didn't have as much. Let's see what we get. Oh yeah, we got issues there. 60 or 55. Yeah, 55 PSI. Let's do that again. We are zeroed out. Got something going on in that top cylinder. In there. I can I can spin that with one hand. Not a lot going on in that cylinder. Shoot, we didn't even get 30 something that time. We didn't even get 30, we got about 25. That's weird. Let me try it one more time. Make sure my seal was sealing. We're zeroed back out. He rode back out. Let's see what we get. I think we got some issues. Yeah, there ain't there ain't much compression on that. Less than 30. It just keeps going down. So she ain't gonna run on that. So 
Before I pull a power head, I'm going to pull a head because hopefully it's a head gasket and not all scored up. I didn't even check to see if the recoil works. Well, that don't feel right either. It's just mostly the starter. Okay. So, we've got to get this head off here and see what's going on in that top cylinder. On a Spanish. A little bit of salt. Just a little bit. Of the old salt. It's been sitting a while. There's rusty crap in there. But I really ain't seeing any scoring. Let me get a rag. It's just a head gasket, eh? She had a little rusty water residue in it. There's some very light scoring, maybe a little bit right there, but nothing that I, I think would cause this motor not to run. So I'm gonna look at this head gasket a little better. Salt everywhere. But hopefully, I don't know what you can see there. But uh, not too bad. See, there's a light scoring there, but I ain't seeing nothing. No chunks of ring or nothing. No damage on the cylinder head. Salt everywhere. Need a good cleaning. Um, let's look at this head gasket. Got a little curled up crap going right there. Be down on the bottom though. Oh, there it is. Probably right there. That might have been it right there. See that right there? Yep, yeah, both sides of it. So, let me see if I got another one. And we'll pop that on and make sure we got compression before we go any further. I'll be right back. Okay, I've been doing a little wire brush scrubbing around here with my wire brush. I want you to watch the salt that comes out of this.
welcome to the world of a salt water outboard guy. That is what it's like. My outboard engine won't cool. I got rags stuffed in here not to get stuff in them cylinders. As best I can anyway. As you can see, she's looking a little cleaner now. I blew about three pounds of salt out of the daggum thing. And here's my brand new head gasket. Some more stuff out my way. What I like to do, this is the Aviation Permatex. I just like to put a light coat on on that side that goes to the to the block. Don't have to be real heavy. That's what the gasket's for. I'm about like like so. Um, stick there. And I put it on the actual head around everywhere. I'll clean that drop out of there, don't you worry. This bottle here is low. I like to do this just to get enough to make everything stick up. And there's a million different kind of you know, everybody likes their own stuff. I've been using this Permatex, Aviation Permatex for a long time, and that's why I like it. Get off of there. All right. Head bolt. All of them look pretty good except for the two. So the two center bolts, I'll go over to my wire wheel and clean these ones up because they're solid white. Never sees. It never sees on me. Come on. So we clean them up. And I'm putting the never sees on the head bolts. Then you need to stick them two bottom head bolts in before you go any further. So that it'll all fit in there. So grab you a couple of bolts. And get with the programmers. Like I said, stick the two bottom ones in. You don't have to go up with them first. Got to get everything else lined up. We got to get that under there. Did I lose a head bolt? I did. There. Now get you a couple more. Everything's all gooped up here. Stay put now. Boop, 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 boop. Two, three, okay, get you out of my way, you out of my way. Oh yeah, 
I forgot to take that off. I got this motor mount thing over here. I, don't, I might do. I should have. I'm going to try it. I'm going to go for it. Hey. Just like that, babies. I got her. I think. Lure. Lure. had a couple questions about these on these 15s about the adjustment of those screws right there that one and the one in there I don't know the size of this what what actual size that is you know 15 30 seconds I don't know what it is but what I can show you is the tool. This is the OMC tool that adjusted. It's called a ball-in hex head driver. I didn't make it up. That's what it's called. And I don't know if you can see it. I'll show you both ways. There's the part number. I can read it to you. It is OMC 327622. Don't know if that helps. 327622 OMC 327622 Now, what size that is That's where you guys come in. Somebody out there got has to know the size of that. Um Now, I went to the websites to several of them. Uh, marineengine.com iBoats, Crowley, Boats.net, and I asked around, and I said, hey, what size is it? And I didn't really get no replies, <clears throat> but I can show you... And also on the websites, I went to uh, and typed in the part number from OMC, and it said no longer available. But um, here is one. It's not near as long as this one and all, but it'll get the job done, you know. And uh, it's the correct size as well. But on here. I don't think this is a size unless it's it says 764 stamped on the end. I don't think that's supposed to be 764ths or anything like that. that. I think that's just their part number. And I don't know if this company's still around. It's Exelite. X C E L I T E. Um, and this came in a set. You get the whole set. Um, yeah. So, and 
and the set is XC Light 99PS-40 and you get the extension with it so you can but there's no sizes on any of these that I can see but with this extension you can get this thing as long or longer than the OMC version so XE light okay there it is I don't know if you can see my gauge, but I'm right at about 11 pounds, 11 and a half. Got my 10 pound shaker, my all American 921 pressure cooker, and you know what's in there. Yummy, lightly smoked salmon getting all jarred up. There's what the uh. Smoked salmon looks like after it comes out the pressure cooker. Lightly smoked. You put that on the on the cracker with that right there and a beverage. Mmm, yummy. Tell you what else I do with that. We mix it up with a little bit of cream cheese, finely diced onion, Worcestershire sauce, little other few goodies, and you got a salmon dip, a smoked salmon dip. That is to die for. So now we gotta pop that power head off there and get it that shift handle. And uh, so. I think we're going to stop right here on that because it's getting a little late outside. And, uh, and I need to go eat some supper. So that's what I'm going to do. So that's going to be a wrap on this one. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for part four on Inside Outboards with your host, Cody Bass.